uh, to New London in 2005 after the movie was uh, was taken place. But I can tell you that the actress must have known <laughs> Susan Kilo because the, the way she like squinted her eyes and pursed her lips, it was just the way to do that. To that. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, I'm not really too interested in laws or lawyers. But I say that if you ever find anybody who's standing up for the what's right and to protect what they have, go and join them and you might be in a movie. <laughs> Bob? Right, Senator Guy. Thank you, Dan. Um, I wish I could say that we can stay on an elated <laughs> plane, but I have to tell you, we're in trouble. Right. We're in trouble because what I call the, dis the disproportionate tyranny of the state against the individual. That's true. Uh, I, I fronted three bills in the Senate this year. It's not about me, it's about you. It's about trying to level that playing field. One was Senate Bill 412, where we have planning and zoning boards. I'm sorry, I live in a town where we have restricted our planning board to lot line adjustments and subdivision approvals, and that's it. <laughs> They're out of control. The loss of our freedom will come at the expense of our property rights. That's the first and main component. Mm -hmm. Our entire system of economics is based upon the private ownership of real property. When we have zoning boards and planning boards and conservation commissions and so forth that tell you what you can and cannot do, that take property and put it into perpetual easements and remove it from the tax base. There's so many things that are happening in our state that are not good news. So one was, I put in a bill for agritourism. We had Steve Forrester, you may or may not know Steve from Henniker, spent over $200,000 in legal fees against a town that decided that it didn't like his definition of agritourism. And so we're going to fix that because Senate Bill 412 says if either before you start your agritourism activity or after you start it, if the town challenges it and says you can't, then you get to go to the Commissioner of Agriculture. The Agriculture Commissioner rules on what he or she thinks is a definition of agritourism. And if the town doesn't like it, they take the commissioner to court, not the farmer. That levels that playing field, okay? We don't bankrupt people for standing up for what they believe is right. There's one arena. The second arena was right to know. Our right to know laws in this state place us number 49 of 50 by the National Institute of Transparency in Government in the 50 states. Why? Because if you disagree with a board, a municipal board or a state agency or whatever, and you feel that you have a right to know certain information, they're required to disclose it, and they say no, you have to take them to superior court. I chaired, I had the honor of chairing a commission designed to study this over the last summer. And we did. We came up with legislation which is somewhat complicated but very, very, very citizen focused. And that legislature flew through the Senate and that legislation and was stopped in the House. And it was stopped in the House because specious reasons, $48,000 is too much money. God gave 250000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs. But $48,000 is too much for your protection of your right to know. So the bill failed in the House. I, if elected, it will come back next year and be even stronger. All right, Senate Bill 555, you can look it up. The other bill uh, was Senate Bill 557. This is a property development issue. We have a state where we have a crisis because we can't build any houses. Everything's locked up. We have planning and zoning boards getting creative in what they're trying to levy as, a, as requirements to prevent construction from going ahead. We have major businesses that would love to come to New Hampshire. And the first question they ask is, how's your housing? And the second is, how's your workforce? And we're in terrible straits in both those areas. So for the purpose of trying to level the playing field so that planning and zoning boards cannot rule, and many times their decisions are arbitrary and capricious because the next door neighbor who knows the planning board chair doesn't like it, it goes on all the time. The disclosure of that uh, is evident everywhere. So we established a, a board that would in fact review the decisions, wouldn't change laws, wouldn't remove local control, would just say, yeah, you're playing by your own rules, or no, you're not, you gotta fix this. And so that went down because, frankly, the Speaker of the House didn't like it. It interferes. Okay, interestingly enough, his town just spent $200,000 in legal fees against an individual who wanted to develop something. Okay, so the point is, this is all about power. 
Government agencies have it. They use it, and very frequently they use it inappropriately, if subtly, to truncate our rights as citizens. I'm not a rabid person. I don't believe in rights-based ordinances because under our Constitution, they don't work. You have to change the Constitution before they actually have grounding and standing. So what I'm telling you is there's a lot of stuff going on around you. Okay, you need to pay attention to the legislature. You need to pay attention. You need to get involved at your local, at, at the local boards. That's where most of the mischief takes place. And so, for that reason, thank you for coming tonight. You know, there's an old saying, Suzette, that, that what's the difference between the chicken and the chef, right? The chef is interested. The chicken is committed. There's the chicken. Thank God that you stood up and you changed the nation.